Hey there, Sarah Wade here with AE Scripts. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how easy it is to get an effect like this using Layer Sculptor from Bow Plugins. Then I'm going to walk you through how our plugin creator, Francois, created this super cool example of material deforming from a skirt into a dress on a paper doll. And finally, I'll show you how this cool morphing head effect was created. First, I'm just going to grab the pen tool, making sure that layer is selected, and I'm going to draw the mask for the middle of the mouth, going in a clockwise direction. And once I've got that drawn, I'm going to go down here and select None. And from here, I'm going to grab the Convert Vertex tool and make sure those corners of the mouth are straight. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw the next mask. Again, going in a clockwise direction, it is important that you draw the masks in the same order around each other. It's gonna make a difference in actually how the tool calculates the way that the texture deforms. And finally, I'm gonna draw one outer mask that's going to not actually animate but just serve as the outer limit of what's going to deform around this mouth. And again I'm going to set that one to none. I'm going to go ahead and name all of these. Okay, I've got my masks all named appropriately. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come up here and grab an instance of the Layer Sculptor plugin, drop it onto my layer, and this is where you'll see how truly easy this tool is to set up. I dropped the Layer Sculptor on there, and now I'm just gonna go up here and I'm gonna select my masks outside to inside. And that's the basic setup. We're ready to go. And then I'm just gonna come over here, let's start at about frame six. I'm gonna hit the M key just so I can see only those masks. And I'm just gonna set keys on the mouth inner and mouth outer mask. I don't wanna key this outer limit. Again, that's just there to say, don't do any deforming or any sculpting outside of this limit. Okay, so I've got my first key set. And now all I've gotta do is just dig in and start animating. We're going to adjust this off camera to get better animation, but just to show you the setup here, now all I have to do is go in and grab those points and start moving them around. And you'll see, you can already see that her, her mouth is moving back there. She's starting to smile for us. Okay, and that might be a little bit too big of a smile. We might end up pulling that back later. But you can see, again, just how easy it was to set that up. So now that we've got that basic movement set up, let's come up top and talk about a few of these parameters. So in the shape parameters, the first thing I have is the number of samples. That's the number of samples along the mask that the plugin is gonna use to calculate your result. I'm gonna leave that set to the default of 100. The next one that we have is the number of subsamples, and that's actually the number of samples from one mask to the next, basically kind of in between samples. We are gonna leave that at the default as well. The higher you set these numbers, the more processing power basically on your system it's gonna take. So you wanna keep them as low as you can as, while you're still getting the result that you want. Fill last mask fills the last mask with the layer's texture. Bezier tension defines the tension of the curve interpolating between the masks. So you need at least three masks for that. Okay, and the next thing you have is some different centroid calculation methods. We're gonna leave that at the default. You can also set your centroid manually. We're not gonna do that here, but that's an option for you as well. Preserve last mask alpha keeps the last mask's alpha the same way that After Effects does. Selection time, we'll use more of this later when we take a look at that morphing, uh, dollar bill morphing animation. But for now, just know that the selection time is the time on your timeline where there's no distortion at all. So for us, we could set that to zero, one, two, you know, anywhere in these first six frames because there's nothing going on there. Basically, everything is kosher. So we're gonna leave that at zero because that'll work great for us. We're not doing anything with overlapping here, so we can skip over these overlap parameters. 
And when we come down here into source parameters, this is where we choose basically what we're going to sculpt with these masks. By default, it's set to the layer that the masks are drawn on, and that's what we want here. So we're just gonna leave that untouched. If you wanted to though, and you had several photographs that are similar and all the features are similarly placed or something like that dress demo that you saw at the beginning of this video, you wanted to change out the source, that this is where you can do that. So right now our only choice is the one we're using. So we're just gonna stick with that, but we could swap that out here on the fly. So you could theoretically animate once and transfer that animation to a whole bunch of different sources. So that's a really cool feature of this tool as well. Composite mode can be none over original over source or under source. We are gonna leave ours at, actually we're gonna put it on over original. That basically means that we are doing this layer sculpt over top of the original image. And again, we don't have overlap, so we will skip over that one. Okay, let's move on to the eye. For the eye, I'm gonna close this screen left eye into a winking shape. So. What I wanna do for that is same way we did with the mouth is set up those masks. I'm just gonna grab the pen tool. With the eye, I'm gonna use open masks and that you'll see in a minute will work just as well as closed masks do with this tool. But this will also give us an opportunity to check out another cool feature of this tool. So I'm gonna draw three masks across the top of the eye. Again, I'm doing them in the same order left to right because the way you draw the mask does make a difference in how the plugin will calculate the sculpting. And again, I have this outer limit. And then I'm gonna to go to the lower eye and do the same thing. Okay, now I'm gonna rename all of these. Okay, now that I've got my masks renamed, I'm actually gonna grab this layer. I'm gonna close these mouth masks because we don't need those. And I'm gonna select all of the masks that I wanna set a key on. Again, excluding those limit masks. I'm gonna go again over to frame six. And I'm just gonna set those keys. Okay, now we're gonna go back up to our effect controls, grab another instance of Layer Sculptor. I just drop that on there. Again, looking at our effects, so we have our mouth effect here. Let's go ahead and rename that so we don't get that mixed up. And we'll call this one screen left eye. And again, I'm just gonna go up here and I'm gonna select those masks top to bottom. So we've got the upper limit, eyelid top, eyelid bottom, bottom lid top, and bottom limit. And we saw that we already had those keys set there. So go back down there and grab those layers. Okay, so we see that we've got keys set only on these inner three. So let's go over a few frames and just start dragging those around. And so this is where we can talk about another really cool feature of this plugin. So I'm not super happy with that animation there. And I'm thinking maybe I should have gone with more masks to start. Maybe I didn't have quite enough. Well, I don't have to go back and start over. I can just grab this in-betweener tool and say create and set in-betweens. And so now what it did is in between each of those masks that I drew, it created another one. So I can just go in here and start fine tuning this animation. I can pull this back up a little bit. Maybe pull that back up. And that's gonna give me a lot more fine tuning with just the click of one button. 
And I've also got all those extra masks down here. So again, this is a really powerful tool. I just created a whole boatload of masks by just clicking a button. So we're gonna keep tweaking this animation, probably set up uh, a few over here for the screen right eye so we can just raise that eyebrow a little bit. But as far as the setup goes, this is basically it. You're done. You just draw the masks, you add the tool, assign the masks, and go to town animating. Play with the settings until you get a result you like. Okay, we're going to play with this off screen to get that final animation. And let's move on to the dress demo. Now, let's take a look at the source file for this dress demo that you saw at the beginning of this video. This demo was put together by Francois, the amazing artist who created this plugin for us. Thank you, Francois. We love the plugin. Don't know what I would do without it. Okay, so looking at this file, we've got a material layer here. And if we hit the E key, we can see there is one instance of the layer sculptor effect on there. I'm going to hit the M key to show you the masks and how they're all animated. So let's drag this up here just so we can see all of them. We've basically got five masks. They are set to be in the first five slots of that layer sculptor effect here. And then those masks are animated across the timeline to create this really cool dress that basically changes styles and lengths right in front of our eyes. So one of the cool things that we can talk about with this dress demo that we didn't need in the demo that we went through step by step is this overlap. Let's just get this dress centered on the screen. So if I were to grab this handle here and pull it over top of that other one, now what I've got going on is an overlapping mask. And that's when we can talk about these set two settings here. The first is invert overlaps, which basically if I check it, it's going to invert that. And that's just telling After Effects, does this mask go in front of or behind the mask I was dragging it across? And the next thing is overlaps method, which is basically how that overlap is going to be calculated. And again, that's whether it's calculated based on the distortion amount or the distance from the centroid. And we can get, you might get a slightly different effect. You see that changing that didn't change this particular file because our centroid isn't really affecting this. So we're just going to go back to amount and then again clicking that overlap basically changes whether it's in front of or behind. So again, a super cool effect here created with just five masks and one instance of the plugin. This plugin is so flexible and you can do so many cool things with it. Okay, let's move on to the morph file. Taking a look at this face morphing exercise file. What we can see here is we've got two different layers with two different faces. If I turn this one off, you can see the one underneath it. And the really cool thing that Francois did here is created this morph between the two masks. Let's just scroll through so we can see that happening. There's about the other point. With the same set of masks. So if I go into this layer here, we can see all of our masks. And let's just close that up and then go into this layer here. And we can see again, all of those same masks. The main difference here is in how the effect is set up. So let's look at the effect for each of these. Go up to that layer sculptor. So you see in this layer, we've got all those same exact masks and the difference comes in with the shape parameters. And you'll see here that the selection time for this is set to zero. And if we go down to this one and take a look at those shape parameters, the selection time is set to 50. So basically we're using the same set of masks, but for the first one, we're saying that this is the non-distorted image, the non-distorted time, which is making this first image be the one that appears. And then we're going all the way over to 50 which is where this is the non-distorted time. So basically by using the same masks and animating them and just changing that, so that selection time, which is basically when your masks are the least distorted, that's enabling us to morph between these two faces in a really cool convincing way. So again, super flexible plugin. You can do so many things with it. We have just barely scratched the surface. I know 
that if you go get a copy of this, you will find a million ways to use it, and it's just going to make everything you do that much more fun. Really, I can't think of anything else out there that does this kind of sculpting of a layer or a texture with this much precision. It's a super cool tool and the possibilities for it are endless. I really recommend that you go get yourself a copy over at AE Scripts and Plugins.